Be of one mind towards one another. My dear friends, I could not help but think as I was reading this, these readings to you just now, that there's so much in this, these scriptures. If only people would pick up the Bible, pick up the New Testament and read and try to understand what's really going on. I'll try to explain some of it to you because it is just absolutely magnificent when you look at Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who has come from heaven, down from heaven, assumed a human nature, and as a man, he instructs us. He shows us divine wisdom. My dear friends, we need to study these great teachings of Jesus, and we need to read the scriptures often so that we can have them in our minds. Recently, I spoke to a man, and he just has no faith. And I said to myself, if only he would pick up the scriptures and he would realize what Jesus Christ is like and how he is God. He had some stumbling blocks. He couldn't believe in the virgin birth. He said, all right, maybe she's a virgin before, but certainly not during and after. That's impossible. He had no faith, no faith in God. As you know, the church teaches he is a, Mary was a virgin before, during, and after. And how many people have no faith? This is what Jesus is talking about, how so many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and the children of the promise, the Jews, the children allegedly of light, will be thrown into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing and teeth. Not only the Jews, but how about the Catholics? All the Catholics who were baptized, received Holy Communion and sa other sacraments, will they make it to eternity unless they repent? Many of them don't practice anymore. They've apostates, they've left the church, they don't go to mass, they don't go to confession. Are they gonna sit down with Abraham and Isaac and the kingdom of heaven? No. Their place will be taken by others, the Gentiles, the people from the East and from the West, like we see in today's gospel. This leper, do you think that he's gonna go on the rest of his life without great thanks to Jesus? I'm sure he was one of Jesus' disciples. You don't just get cured of your leprosy and then go out and have a good old time. And the centurion, I wonder who he is. I wonder if he's gonna sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, I think so. Jesus says, I have not seen such faith in all of Israel. And he, a centurion, a pagan, a Roman soldier. My dear friends, there are many lessons in this gospel. I haven't hit you with the best one yet, but there's so many other lessons in this particular, and this is what particular readings. And that's why be of one mind towards one another and practice charity. And Jesus gives us a radical lesson in charity, to do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute and calumniate you. That was unheard of. Do good to those who hate you. In the old days, of course, it was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Old Hammurabi's code, that was the code of man. If somebody did something to you, you do the same to him. That still goes around today. People feel the same way and they want to get revenge. My dear friends, revenge is mine, saith the Lord. I always tell people, don't ask for revenge. Pray for those people who hurt you. Because my friends, I am telling you now, all right, I firmly believe this, that those people who work evil and iniquity and injustice are going to pay greatly for it in this life and also the next all right so therefore pray for them because the lord is a very just judge he says if you hurt one of my little ones better a millstone be put around your neck and you be thrown into the sea than what's going to happen to you Better you get punished in this life so you can repent and these things happen to you because the punishment in the next life is going to be so severe. And when you think about it, 
and we should, and we should tell people about hell, because hell does exist, and there are many, many people there who didn't believe in it. Oh, I don't believe in hell. And as Padre Pio said, so, 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 so what's the right word? Not humorously, ironically, you will, when you get there, you will believe in hell when you're in it. And that's why we need to pray and sacrifice, as I tell you every sermon, because Our Lady said that, to pray and sacrifice, because the justice of God is very severe. How could, when you think about it, how could a God so good punish somebody for all eternity, all eternity? Well, he gives them every chance he can get. He has come down, he died on the cross, he sacrificed his life, he's done all he could. He begs us, he begs us to repent. He begs us to live good lives, he begs us to be good, and so on. And he's given us these wonderful teachings, as I'll read a few today, these wonderful teachings in our church for people to listen and learn. And that's why you gotta be an evangelist. You have to. When somebody doesn't believe, you have to try to give him some truths, help him to believe. And if he doesn't believe, then keep praying for him because that person is a lost soul. He's a misbegotten. You know what a misbegotten means? Miss badly begotten. A misbegotten soul is a soul that was born, all right, and probably should not have been born because if he's born, and he dies, and he's misbegotten, and he's lived an evil life, he's going to be in hell for all eternity. Better, better, he were not misbegotten. Not, I should say, not misbegotten, but begotten. Better he had never been born, as Jesus said of Judas. Better if that man had not been born. Don't let that be said of anybody that you know, or if God forbid it be said of us. Better if we were not born. And if we have things on our conscience, we better get rid of them, because God will always forgive you. He's full of kindness now. He begs us, come to me all you who labor and are burdened and I will refresh you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Jesus is so meek and humble of heart. Look at the crown of thorns. They took the thorns and they bashed it into his head, protruding from one side to the next, banging it in, giving him a crown. Hail, King of the Jews. King of the Jews, they give him a crown. And he never said a word. Meek and humble of heart. Begging us. So let us be his missionaries and go out to evangelize and try to bring people in, even if they have to come into us screaming and yelling, as it were, drag them into heaven, because that's the way some of them are now. So hard-hearted, so indifferent, so careless, so careless. And that's what St. Paul is talking about. We need to be of one mind towards one another, doing all that we can to people and being kind to them and generous, one mind, loving them and so on. And of course, the Lord says, vengeance is mine. But I say to you, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who persecute and calumniate you. St. Paul tells the Romans the same message, to no man render evil for evil, but provide good things. Do not avenge yourselves, but give place to the wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. The Lord will repay, as I've already explained to you. Right? So we see, my friends, St. Paul is reminding his followers that Christians who believe in Jesus Christ must love their enemies and take no revenge on anyone who opposes them. Revenge is not for man to take. It's not for you to take. This is God's domain. And he alone knows who is evil and who is good. And he will ask all his creatures to render an account of their works. If men do not repent of their evil, they will 
have to endure the severe justice of God. This can be done, this can be seen in what Jesus said would happen to anyone who causes one of the little ones to be da- to sin. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it were better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck and he be drowned in the sea. Now, how heavy is a millstone, my friends? 3,000 pounds. I don't know what that's in kilos, maybe 3,000, whatever it is. But it's heavy. And if anybody has a millstone around his neck, they're going to be thrown into the sea. Interesting, one of the newspapers I used to read used to have the millstone award. Every week, have a little person who was who deserves the millstone for their evil doings. And they weren't kidding. Hopefully a man or person who was given the millstone award would repent, hopefully. While God in all his mercy is also all just, and those who offend him and do evil to their fellow men will endure a most severe judgment. This is why Jesus asks us to pray for those who persecute us, that they will have They will not have to endure his justice for their deeds. If we could see how the justice of God should punish those who do evil, then we would fervently pray for them. Jesus warns us not to despise or hurt them. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, their angels in heaven always behold the face of my Father in heaven. And what are we doing to our little ones? and those innocents in the world. We are murdering our babies with abortion. We are denying life for our brothers and sisters to our children with contraception. We are corrupting the morals of our youth with false teachings and misguided sex education. And we are denying our children the faith in a good Catholic family by not marrying and not practicing the faith. The list could go on and on. Has there ever been such a sinful generation as ours is today? How severe will the vengeance of God on the day of judgment towards our generation for the scandal that we have caused the little ones? And as I also tell you every week, what do you think is going to happen to our generation? Do you think God is going to let us live this life unpunished? The chastisements are coming coming to us Fast and furious, all right? Fast and furious. You read some of the Catholic prophecies from the various saints and everything, all right? And you will see it's going to be very severe coming down the road, my friends. That's why I tell you, get people to repent now. Because God has to punish us a little in this life to wake us up, hit us over the head with a club so we don't just get careless. He's going to do that. And when we see the punishments of God, my dear friends, for abortion and all these other sins, they are going to be so severe. It's beginning. So we need to overcome evil with good. And that's what St. Paul tells us. Tells us. <coughs> if thy enemy is hungry, give him food. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For by so doing that, you can heap coals of fire on his head. Coals of fire, what does that mean? St. Augustine tells us that coals of fire are, when you do good to those people, they don't know what to do. If they slap you on one cheek and you turn to them the other cheek, you've astounded them, they want to fight. Or if they do something bad to you and you return good, they, they, they don't know what to do. That's coals of fire, and it, it will change them. It will wake them up, much more so than revenge. That's the wonderful lesson of Jesus Christ, the gospel. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute and calumniate you. And you'll heap coals of fire on them. St. Augustine tells us the violence of charity. How about that? That's an oxymoron. We don't normally see violence and charity go together. An oxymoron is a startling paradox. The violence of charity, right? Evil must be answered and conquered by good. By gentleness, Christians must disarm anger, and by charity they must break down hatred. 
against the violence of charity, says St. Augustine. The world is powerless. They're powerless. They don't know what to do. They want to fight, or they want to do this, and they want to do that. So this is what, what St. Augustine tells us. It is the same lesson that Jesus taught when he said, but I say to you not to resist the evildoer. On the contrary, if someone strikes thee on the cheek, right cheek, turn to him the left also. Only those filled with the spirit of Jesus can understand this divine wisdom. And today, we just a quick comment. We talked a little bit today, but I think we get the message. Hopefully, <coughs> we see the beauty of the, the centurion and the leper. The leper in today's gospel has the spirit of joy, joy, Jesus because he firmly believes that Jesus can cure him <coughs> of his leprosy. His faith and confidence in Jesus are rewarded. And stretching forth his hand, Jesus touched him, saying, I will be thou made clean. We can certainly admire the leper who has trust in the goodness of Jesus by coming to him, even though he knows that as a leper, all are advised to shun him as unclean. He goes to Jesus with great hope and confidence that he can make him clean. If Jesus wills it, his trust is in Jesus' goodness is rewarded instantly. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Like the leper, the centurion also has great faith in Jesus. He also has great charity. He is not asking for help for himself, but for his servant. Lord, my servant is lying sick in the house, paralyzed, and is grievously afflicted. The centurion, though he is a pagan, is also aware of Jesus should not enter his house. He knows that Jesus, who is a prophet, having great power with God, does not need to come all the way to his house and can cure him from where he is. Lord, I am not worthy that you come under my roof, but only say the word, even though you're miles and hours away. Say but the word, and my servant shall be healed. Amen, I say to you, Jesus, we have not found such great faith in Israel. And I tell you, many will come from the east and from the west and will feast with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be put forth into darkness outside. There'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. By contrast, the faith of the children of Abraham, who should know better, is so weak that they will not feast with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom. Go thy way, thy faith has, has, as thou hast believed, so be it done. Although Jesus says these words to the centurion, they also apply to the leper. Here we see, too, the, how important it is to have faith in Jesus. Ironically, in today's gospel, the two men who have faith in Jesus are despised by the Jews, a leper and a Roman soldier, despised. A leper and a pagan Roman soldier. There is the most... This is the mo there is a most important lesson for all of us who have been called to follow Christ. We need to practice the same faith in God and charity to all, or else, like the Jews, we will be excluded from the kingdom and be in the darkness outside, weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is why Our Lady came to Fatah, my friends, to wake us up. Pray and sacrifice, for many souls will go to hell because no one prays and sacrifices. So make sure you're praying many rosaries, morning, noon, and night, especially during these evil times, because God is going to operate. He's coming. He's coming soon, and he's operating. He's operating now. We don't even realize it. As I say, we will see the justice. You will see the justice of God against evildoers. I guarantee, I'm not a prophet, but I'll tell you the truth. God cannot let injustice be unpunished. All those who have done evil to others, as we see in history, just look at the history books. Where are all the great ones of the world, the Napoleons, the Hitlers, the Stalins? Where are they? What kind of a death did they have? 
My dear friends say, I'm sure they didn't have a pretty death. And where are they today? It would be nice if they were saved, but we don't know. Hopefully they would repent. But if they did not repent, they're going to be in hell for all eternity. And so will all those who do not repent and do works of terrible injustice to others. And this is why we need to pray. Pray so that some of them will be saved because the, the, their fate is just unbelievable. If you have any, if you think and meditate about hell, you'll realize you don't want anybody to go there, all right? Especially yourself. And pray for your parents, your relatives, your friends, your children, your grandchildren, whoever. Pray for them because so many people, as the saints tell us, they tell us that most people, the saints, most people are not saved. Many are called, few are chosen. Chosen. It's up to us, it's in our hands, but we do refuse it so many times, we just don't care. So don't let that happen to you and try not to let that happen to anybody in your life, any of your loved ones, pray for them. Pray the rosary, continually. May the Lord bless you.